Tempo. It's a little sedan made by Fiat, obviously, and it's relatively popular in Europe. And in fact, it's won a couple of awards in Europe. It comes in two sort of flavors here in South Africa. You get the hatchback and you get the sedan. We're driving the sedan. The hatchback has three trim levels, one of them called lounge. And the sedan doesn't have the lounge trim level. So this sedan comes with a automatic gearbox. It's a six-speed auto and um, made to a 1.6 liter engine. Engine produces 81 kilowatts and about 150 newton meters of torque, which makes it okay for a little town car, but not super sprightly if you're trying to do anything in a hurry. Automatic box is good. It's not, it's certainly not sort of a DSG or an S-Tronic box that um, I've gotten quite used to in the Audi group. But on the whole, it does a relatively good job of, of switching gears. It is really built as sort of a city car sedan. In fact, it's even got a city mode button which lightens up the steering um, and makes your acceleration less sort of jerky. You turn that off if you're on the highway, it gives you a bit more stability. Um, the car looks pretty good. It's got some cool taillights going on at the back. From the front at certain angles, you kind of have like a Ford slash Aston vibe to it. Um, but on the whole, it's an Italian designed car. It looks really, really nice. It's not badly priced either. This one comes in at 274,000 Rand, which I suppose as competitor would be like the Jetta. So it's a bit cheaper than the Jetta. Jetta's gonna run you a good 350, um, if not 400 for the, for the bigger engines. It's got 510 liters of boot space, and that's a lot. It's got a big, big boot in it. In fact, there's a sort of fold-up ladder thing that I can get into this boot that I can't get into my S4 Avant, just sort of lying down. So they've made really, really efficient use of the space in this car. Uh, to maximize maximize the boot space and they've done the same inside the cabin there's a lot of room here there's like headroom up here you can get two burly blokes in the back too um, quite comfortably if you if you are the designated driver on a, a night out at the pub so all in all it's a really really compelling little package um, I've not seen a lot of them on the road so I'm not sure why people are shying away from buying these but it's a fantastic little car the interior, the dash is well laid out. It's got a radio with Bluetooth, um, an auxiliary jack. It's got a uh, USB port so it charges your phone. No CarPlay or any of that fancy stuff, but that knocks 20 grand off the bull. Got an aircon with auto climate control. It's got a dashboard with a full trip computer. Um, it's relatively economical, probably not as economical as as a small diesel would be. So on the whole, it's a really, really good little car. It's got these two little, it's got a full multifunctional steering wheel. And then it's got these two sort of paddles at the back of the steering wheel, which are normally used for sort of flappy paddle gearboxes. Except in this car, it's in fact not a flappy paddle gearbox. It is a radio control. The only gripe and the only complaint I would have about this car is stopping it. Let me explain. So you put your foot down and it accelerates, not terribly quickly, but it kind of builds up a bit of momentum and builds and builds and builds. And before you know it, you're doing 110, 130, right? And then you step on the brakes and the car just doesn't feel like it's slowing down as fast as you would like. A couple of times I've had to brake relatively aggressively. We're not sort of slamming on brakes here, but you're, you're braking harder than usual. And I just kind of find myself worried that the car's not slowing down as quickly as I'd like it to slow down. And I'm worried I'm gonna hit the car in front of me. And that's like a bit of a weird sensation. I suppose the suspension, which is fantastic by the way, the suspension, see there, like you just don't feel like it's stopping fast enough. The suspension is very muted. It, um, it absorbs road noise and it's sort of uneven road surfaces fantastically. But I think that lends itself to just making the car feel a little more disconnected than, than I'm used to. But it's the kind of thing I think once you own the car and this is your daily driver, I think you'd get quite used to driving around at this car. 
a couple of uneven road surfaces in Cape Town that I drive on a regular basis. And every time I've driven it in this car, I've noticed specifically how sort of absorbent this car is in terms of just absorbing that, that road noise. So this car honestly is a fantastic value proposition, I think. Um, it comes with your sort of standard three year maintenance plan, blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of people would be worried about the reliability of this car. We'll have to see what that looks like in three to five years. But the value proposition here is fantastic. It's a good looking car. It's well appointed. It's got all the bits and bobs inside that that you need. The seats are a bit kind of weird at first. It's got a very uh, high dash. But once you get used to the car and once you settle in, it's a very comfortable daily driver. Um, it's well priced. It's reasonably economical. It's plenty spacious. It's got a city mode which helps. So all in all, the Fiat Tipo is a good little car. I would highly recommend a test drive in one of these if you're thinking about sort of a mid-level sedan, big Jetta kind of level car. I'd highly, highly recommend a test driving one of these.